Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, January 9th. 2020. So this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the 9th of January does not mean it absolutely has to resonate only on that day. This can resonate for you at any time. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, I ha I, first, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to everyone that joined me last night for happy hour and the birthday party for divine conversations divine conversations is officially two years old it's <laughs> it has entered it's into its terrible twos it's divine conversations is officially a toddler um and yeah things could get pretty interesting from this point on right <laughs> um we had a great time i had an unboxing and we did happy hour Last night, if you missed that, it is still up and available for you to watch. You'll be able to watch it whenever you like for however many, however, however long you like. Yes? Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so a big thank you to all of you for that. Okay, so let's get into the collective energies today. Um, and it took a minute for for um, these this message to come out here. Uh, but what came out, we have the High Priestess here. Um, and when she came out, actually, she was, she did fly out, she did fly out and she was kind of sideways like this. Um, but spirit tells me, spirit was saying, no, this card needs to be upright. Okay. Um, I just, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I, I just heard, and at first I thought this was just for me, but then spirit was like, no, tell everyone what you just heard. I just heard, use your intuition wisely. Here's the thing, because we have another depiction of the of the high priestess here but this is the moon right where the high priestess is coming forward um in her purity bare in you know just i mean maybe she may be a spiritual being and she may have but she's a spiritual being just like all of us but she may have all this infinite wisdom but she's still a part of us okay when she sits here in this space as an authoritative figure as an authority right um my, you know, my camera is really giving me fits when it comes to, to this whole focus situation. Anyway, um, when she sits here in her authoritative state, um, she's she's hiding secrets. Sure, she's holding something back, but she's coming forward to help you learn something, to help you teach, to help teach you something. Right? When she comes to you here, at least in this depiction of the, this this side of the moon, she's coming to you. Almost, I almost want to say as your equal, or but it's made more like as your friend, um, as a guide, as a nurturer. She's she's not trying to say she's any more or any less than you, and she comes forward bringing you an opportunity to to awake from the illusion. Yes, um, this card definitely depicts uh, what we know to be as the moment Morpheus gives Neo the choice of taking the blue or the red pill in the matrix, right? And that's what we've been saying about this card for so long. On the other side of the deck, we have the seven of wands here, okay? So what I got from this message is that the high priestess is kind of asking you, is kind of reminding you that um, you've been awakened to so much more than you have before i feel it and it's interesting because this energy was coming forward this is kind of how i what the energy i woke up in this morning um i was feeling fairly doubtful um and just like kind of scared and i had to sit i mean i was sitting there for a good for a good while i spent like a good hour this morning um because I, I woke up pretty early naturally but i spent a good hour this morning just like praying and like asking for faith and asking for help with faith and belief and trust and patience um it was just like my my the doubt was just getting to me you know it, it was it was an interesting moment um uh and i do i am kind of 
do feel like I'm still a little struggling with that a little bit. Um, but this message kind of, it kind of pertains to that because it's like, but you've been awakened. You see so much more now than you ever have seen in the past. You're so much more aware now. There's really no reason to doubt yourself. I'm almost hearing an energy of between the moon and the seven of wands being your overall energy here. I'm hearing an energy. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, remember your training. Remember what you've been through. Remember what this journey has been for you. Remember all of the things that you've, you've accomplished, the things that you've seen and the ways that you've changed and all the ways that you've awakened. Yeah. So if any of you are really dealing with that doubt today, number one, I feel you. Okay. <laughs> um, but number two, don't allow your doubt and fear to get in the way okay i would i would recommend that you work extra hard or put extra focus into believing in yourself and staying in alignment with your path pray for assistance as much as you can whether that be from god source the angels your higher self you, you know your your spirit guides your ancestors your and all that stuff or we could even be, you know, ask for help from your friends too, if that's relevant to you, if that, you know, if that pertains to your situation, if that's a healthy sit a space that you can go to, it's not a space that's going to fill you with even more doubt, right? I, okay, spirit is, I'm, spirit's giving me kind of an energy and it feels like this is kind of like a test of faith here for many of us. It's like, okay, you say that you have faith or you say that you believe or you say that you want this, whatever it is you're going for. It's like, okay, but how committed to it are you really? That is very interesting. Show us how committed you are to this. Are you going to, are you going to hold your boundaries or are you gonna fold under the pressure? Seven of Wands. Are you going to try and fall back asleep? Which in essence, you really can't quite do, but you could act like it, right? Or are you going to choose to stay fully awakened and trust the universe, right? Ooh, that is a tall order, guys. Let me tell you, it absolutely is a tall order. <laughs> and, and look, I'm, I am this person, right, who is a reader, a channeler, a, a guide for people who seek the guidance. I'm, I'm, I'm a way shower. I'm, a, I'm a, a messenger, right? But I'm also human. And I go through periods where it's like I have trouble trusting myself. And I guess it, maybe it would, should be easier for me to not to, 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 to trust myself and easier for me to believe in myself because I validate my intuition every day by doing these readings that resonate for you guys and then also doing private readings for people that resonate with them. And they tell me all the time, it's like you, you were so tapped in. It's like, okay, excellent. I'm, I'm glad. And I don't say that to toot my own horn or pat myself on the back. I say that because I'm still human. And I still go through periods where it's like, am I, is this real? Am I doing the right thing? Am, am I, am I really picking up on the right thing? And spirit says to me, Eric, the guidance is correct. That's something that they've said to me actually for a long time. And I was hearing it the most when I was in really in the thick of the real purgy, nasty energy of my, my personal twin flame journey. And they would, they just kept saying, they just kept, you know, giving me the same messages over and over and i'm like you you guys this can't be right this can't be real i mean it's th th this doesn't there is no evidence of this in the physical realm like what the hell are you telling me like this this, this cannot be true and they would say to me eric the guidance is correct but that's all they'd say it's quite vague isn't it okay but again the universe is not going to give you all the answers they're not going to give you the answers unless it's, it's strictly on a need to know basis and they're not holding anything back from you because you're not worthy of knowing but they don't want they don't want to get in the way because if they give you too much then that could sabotage the situation so this right this period right now 
if you're re if you're resonating with this either right now or maybe if you'll be resonating with it later or if you're watching it after like I don't know, after the 9th or maybe even long after the 9th of January and you're resonating with this, please know that this is a period that is testing your faith and your resilience and your commitment to whatever it is that is in your heart. Yeah? And I say that specifically because it's not about what your ego wants. It's not about what, you know, you're, you're generating your willpower towards just to, just again, to feed your ego or some sort of like, and some, something that really doesn't resonate with you or serve your soul. I mean specifically, what is in your heart? What is your heart leading you towards? Because your heart is going to lead you towards something that may not necessarily have any sort of evidence in the physical. Your heart may be leading you towards something in which all of the, the, the physical representations or whatever you see in the physical may speak otherwise or say otherwise um it, it will your heart will lead you towards things that don't necessarily seem to be right at first but your heart knows your heart knows the truth your heart sees more feels more than what's on the surface so what is in your heart not your mind what's in your heart follow that it's not always easy to do. <laughs> mm. But it's worth it in the end. All right, guys. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to sit with that a little bit myself. <laughs> All right, kids. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then we'll see what other messages we have today, yeah? Oh, wow. Ten of Pentacles and the Lovers. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, January 9th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this five shuffles, but um, check it out. I just saw, as I was channeling, I was doing my breath in and out. I, I take a deep breath and then, and it, with intentions to like draw in energy. And then as I breathe out, I breathe in that energy that I drew in, into the cards with intentions of this being our energy that we're going to discuss for the day. And the energy that I saw was purple which is indicative of the high priestess energy, higher wisdom, psychic ability, intuition, um, downloads from the universe, all that kind of stuff, your crown chakra, your third eye chakra, all of that good stuff. But then right after that, I saw that, I saw this again. My eyes were closed while I was doing this and I, I, breathed, I breathed in, drew in the energy, pushed the energy into the cards, I saw the purple and then I saw this. Union is coming, union is happening. Of course, this does mean that you need to have union within first, but it's there. I just heard it's happening. <laughs> I hear you got this on lock. You just have to keep following through with all the things that you've been doing so far up until this point. Wow. One. And, and Spirit's kind of coaching me here. It's like, Eric... Look at everything that you've been through over the last two years, too. And think about where you are now. This is three. <laughs> Still in love with the same person. Still doing what it is we guided you towards in starting your channel. And sure, you wanted it to be successful. This is four. You wanted it to be successful, but you didn't know it was going to become a main, it was going to be like a main source of income for your life, or it's going to be like your main gig amongst some others, but you like to keep busy. So, okay. So why do you doubt yourself now? After all this time, 
why do you doubt us? And the answer is because I'm scared. Are you scared, guys? Because if you are, you have every right to be. <laughs> that is okay. And actually, it's okay to admit that you're scared. If you are scared, I think you should admit it to yourself right now. Be honest with yourself. Then you could go so far as to say, okay, well, what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? Losing this person? But I can't really say I have them. Maybe not physically. Yet. What are you afraid of? Hmm. I mean, I guess that's a rhetorical question, but... I really feel like you should answer it for yourself. If you're feeling afraid, admit that. Acknowledge it. Let it be your guide is what I'm hearing. To a certain extent. But then ask yourself, well, why am I afraid of this? What's the worst that could happen? I mean, it's not like I'm dead, right? I'm not dead yet. I'm still here. There must be a reason for that, right? So what am I so afraid of? These are good questions to ask yourselves, guys. I highly recommend you do so. And number five. Alrighty, kids. Oh, and I do have coffee today. You just can't see it because the inside of my mug is dark, but I decided to go with coffee today. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see what we've got for today, kids. Thursday, January 9th, 2020. My eyes are closed, so I don't know what just fell out. Um, I want to do this three times. So, oop. Take this one, too. Okay. Two more, they're saying. Oh, okay. Okay, two. Ooh. Leave that one in there. All right. Okay, and one last, one last shuffle here. For Thursday, January 9th, 2020, and beyond. A whole stack of cards just keeps trying to fall out here. There we go. All right, that's enough. Overall energy, we have the Ten of Pentacles here. The Ten of Pentacles with the Four of Pentacles. All right, so this is the energy that... Um, this is the energy that I was talking about with the Four of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, you have to stay on your ground. You have to remain grounded. And you have to, you have to be in this for the long haul. And regardless, regardless of what this is for you, whether it's a career, it's a life goal, it's a relationship, it's a certain, I don't know, a certain body type. Like if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to gain weight you know put on some gain like get some gains going or some shit i don't know like whatever it is for you you have to be willing to be in it for the long haul because your life is not i mean your life could end in a day sure but what if it doesn't what if you end up being here for the next 30 40 50 60 years you got to be willing to run the marathon I mean, that's what you came here for anyway. So hold your ground. Hold firm. Hold steady. Four of Pentacles. This is one of those moments where it's like, I, I don't mind seeing the stubborn energy of the Four of Pentacles because that stubborn energy is going to get you where you're trying to go, ultimately. Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is like the ultimate physical destination, whether this be a family or a career. A financial situation, maybe, because it is pentacles. And think about it. When you reach that point, you'll be able to look back on your life and say, Hey, I did it. I fucking did it. Right? <laughs> 
we have the Three of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Ten of Wands all in reverse, with the Two of Swords upright. It's a bit of indecision. But then we have the Ace of Cups, the Three of Wands, the Six of Cups, and the, the King of Wands, with the Four of Swords in reverse. <laughs> okay, now this could this King of Wands energy could be you, or it could be Spirit is saying Spirit literally just said after I said that Spirit uh, after I said this King of Wands could be you literally Spirit right after me that said uh, Divine Counterpart. So this could be you as a Divine Masculine or as a, a Divine Counterpart, or this could be your Divine Masculine. If you don't resonate with the Twin Flame journey, or if this is not resonating for you as a, a, a romantic situation, this is financial, this is business, this is career, something like that. This is a creative project. But this King of Wands here, this is all the energy of the King of Wands. I'm not seeing two separate individuals here. I'm seeing an individual well, I'm seeing one person. This all pertains to whomever this would resonate for in how, in, in whichever way or yeah, in whichever way that would resonate. And this could very well be speaking to the masculine energy within you. Okay. So keep that in mind. Even if you are more of the, on the feminine side, like me, I'm, I resonate more with feminine energy, although I do have both masculine and feminine within. We all do. Right. Okay. Um, there is a there is a sense of being well aware of what it is you want. Um, there is a soulmate situation here that you're aware of that I'm hearing belongs on your path with you and you're well aware of this. You don't have to think about it anymore. You don't have to meditate on it anymore. You don't need to, you don't need, it's like you don't need proof anymore, okay? You're, you're out of this four of swords energy where you're like, you're meditating about it. You're, you're trying to figure it out. You're kind of like sleeping on it a little bit, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. You're out of that energy. And you're here with the king of wands, ready to go, aware of the love that you have either uh, for another person or maybe for yourself which is generating this um, energy of getting reconnected to something that you've always wanted to do, getting reconnected to the past. The Six of Cups is the past, but it's also a soulmate. I mean, it's mainly a soulmate. That's, that's the main message from the Six of Cups. But then the, also the Six of Cups does represent nostalgia, um, family, early childhood, just the past in certain situations. It could also represent like past friendships, but that gets into like the whole nostalgia aspect of it, right? But coupled with the Ace of Cups here, okay, and this King of Wands, there is definitely an awareness because the Ace of Cups is in daylight. The Six of Cups is in daylight. I'm sorry, the Six of Cups is here. The Six of Cups is in daylight. The King of Wands is in daylight. There, There is no shadow here. There's no, I mean, it's very clear. And it's very clear to you that this is part of your path. Now, this could be you on the feminine side recognizing who your who your twin or your divine masculine is, and not needing to question it any longer with this four of swords in reverse, not needing to sleep on it, not needing to meditate on it, not needing to figure it out. And we have this side of the equation. Three of Cups, Seven of Swords, Ten of Wands, all in reverse, which I like. But then we have the Two of Swords with it, which is upright here. And it's not this side of the card where the individual is blindfolded and there seems to be a storm raging behind her. Which this side of the this, this this side of the card can represent doubt, fear, and denial. Also indecisiveness. But then you have it's this side of the card that has come out, where things are much calmer on this side of the card. She's staring at the moon. It doesn't look like she's blindfolded, but you can't really see. This feels kind of like a defensive energy here. This feels like an energy of maintaining your mental balance. 
calming the waters of your emotions even, potentially, because she is surrounded by water. There is a depiction of the moon here, which represents, which, which um, the moon represents feminine energy. It represents, in astrology, the moon represents your mind, but it also can represent, the moon can represent your emotions because the, you, the, the moon, you know, um, dictates the tide and the ocean can represent emotion. It tends to re represent emotions like water and all that. I just get an energy of, um, mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what spirit said was what I was, well, I said, I get an energy of and spirit finished the statement of, um, being decisive, being clear and, and knowing exactly, being clear on what you want and knowing exactly what it is that you want. Being decisive and holding that space, holding that space of decisiveness and not allowing, um, not allowing deception, burdens, or external influences to sway you. I mean, look at how, look, look at, if I put it like this, right? Look at, it's like, oh, I'll put it on the table. It's easier for you to see it that way. You see, the way that she, the way that this is positioned here, it looks like this individual in the Two of Swords is literally keeping all of this fuckery or tomfoolery, Three of Cups, Ten of Wands, Seven of Swords, keeping all of that at bay. You shall not pass. You are not going to get in here and screw up what I'm working towards. Ten of Pentacles, holding your ground. Four of Pentacles. Okay. Yeah, I just get a really strong energy here with this King of Wands, Ace of Cups, Six of Cups, Three of Wands, all upright with this Four of Swords in reverse here. I just get a very strong feeling of I don't need to question this anymore. I know who I am. I know who I want. I know what I want. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I want to share this with you guys because, um, it's pretty relevant. You remember how in the be very beginning of the reading here, I was talking about how I, I question myself sometimes. Like I get, I fall into these moments where I like really, really question myself. And throughout this reading here, as I've been channeling the message and been speaking to this, they have been repeating his name in my head constantly. They just did it again. But then I'm still in this energy of fear and doubt. And it's mainly because I don't see anything on the surface. Well, I don't see much. I don't see all of the things that I would really, really like to see. But you see, that would just be feeding my ego, wouldn't it? Mmm. Mmm. But I need to trust myself. And I need to trust in the universe. Because the universe is not going to lead you to anything that is not meant for you, that is not right for you, that is not going to serve you. We're in this energy of needing to have all kinds of physical evidence to show us that we're on the right path. Instead of just trusting our intuitions and trusting that the universe has our backs and is not in the business of giving us anything that we don't desire. They, might, they may not exactly give it to you when you want it or how you want it, but they're definitely going to give you what you ask for. They're not in the business of saying no. There is, the universe doesn't have no in its vocabulary. It has a yes, but, but there's never a no.
And I mean, I guess you could look at it in certain in certain perspectives and say, well, actually, I didn't get what I wanted, so I did get a no. It's like, well, no, you may not have gotten what you wanted the way you wanted it or from the person that you wanted it from or in the way that you wanted it to happen, in the time frame that you wanted it to happen, but you're still going to get what you want. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So let's get into some clarification here. I want to look at this Three of Cups in Reverse, Ten of Cups in Reverse, Seven of Swords in Reverse, and the Two of Swords Upright. I want to see... I want to get this... I want to flesh this out a little more for you guys. What is this energy here for you? Okay, one more shuffle. For the collective. Oh, well, well, well. Would you look at that? The Five of Cups has come out in reverse with the Knight of Cups on the bottom of the deck and being guided to take the top three. Okay. We have the Five of Cups in reverse, which is a good thing. So there is a re release of some sort of heartbreak, some sort of guilt, fear, maybe even some sort of shame. But then... Well, actually, no, this is really good. <laughs> if you think about it in terms of um, what this Two of Swords is representing here, I'm getting this Two of Swords is like keeping a balance within your mind, right? Keeping any sort of energies that would further generate doubt or anything like that at bay. You have the Five of Wands, the King of Swords, and the Hanged Man. So the Five of Wands typically represents you know external conflict ego battles whatnot whatever it could also represent an inner conflict right and i am kind of seeing both of those here both internally and externally however with the nature of the message that we're talking about today this really could be it does feel much stronger as an internal conflict but then you have the king of swords that's remaining objective and is that energy that's saying okay well look let's look let's analyze this okay let's look at whatever this five of wands energy is okay all of this opposition all of this differing of opinion all of this inner conflict and let's work to see what it truly is see it for what it truly is is it worth paying attention to well, the only way you would know if it was pay worth paying attention to is if you went through this process of the hanged man in changing your perspective. And you have done that. Okay, you have done that. It's from this perspective here of this enlightenment that's come through for you with the hanged man that you're able to look at these things objectively and say, is this really serving me or is this illusionary? Mm. The Knight of Cups being at the bottom of the deck is you either being or needing to be in this energy of following your heart. There is an innocence here with the Knight of Cups. There's also a little bit, uh, there's, a, there's a small twinge of naiv naivety. There's a small twinge of adolescence but i don't mean that in a derogatory right way it feels more like innocence than anything else <clears throat> it's not a bad thing here it's not I, I know i know many of us would be saying well look i ain't trying to accept no offers from no knight like i'm trying to get i need me a king i need me a queen like blah 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 mm, be careful I would pull, I would rein that in a little bit, especially here, because this feels, this just feels innocent. 
it's not fully grown, it's not fully mature, but it definitely has something of value to offer you. And this really feels like an energy that is willing to grow with you or you being willing to grow with someone else. This is you or them approaching the situation with an open heart, full of purity and innocence, not the essence of, um, what am I looking for here? The essence of life experience that would come with reaching the king or queen status. Do you know what I mean? Like the tarnish that comes with reaching king or queen status here in the physical world. And I don't mean that in a way that, well, you know, you're, you're the king or the queen. Now you've been through a lot. No. So now you're dirty. You're sullied. It's no, it's, you've been through some shit. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. It takes time and experience to reach that king or queen status. And let me tell you, that is, I mean, y'all should know, I guess maybe whatever, but that is not an easy thing to reach. It's not an easy status to reach. It comes with its trials and its tribulations. You cannot reach that status without getting yourself dirty, period. But here, with this energy, there's a sense of innocence and purity here that is beautiful. And even if you are in this king or queen status, it's like that you, you still have access to this energy here. You always will. It's whether you choose to shine it, let it shine forward or not. That's the deciding factor there. Okay. All right. So. Let's look at this now. I'm going to reshuffle. We have the King of Wands, the Ace of Cups, the Six of Cups, the Three of Wands, all upright with the Four of Swords in reverse. So let's look a little bit deeper into this energy here. Let's flesh this out a little bit more. And give this one more shuffle. Uh, okay, so let's look a little deeper into this energy here for you guys. Oh, that's a lot. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you tricked me, guys. No, we didn't. Overall energy is the Page of Swords. Okay. Watching someone is the first thing I get from that. You're watching someone. He's watching you. She's watching him. That's what I'm hearing. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, we have... The Four of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the Nine of Swords, and the Hermit. <laughs> There's that Virgo energy. We also have Libra or Gemini. So this is the storyline up until now. There was a missed opportunity. Four of Cups. Someone made it very clear where they stand. Queen of Swords. And made some cuts which created drama, which created anxiety, but it created a situation in which someone was then forced to go within and do some soul searching of their own. Because I get an energy of like, with this Queen of Swords, it's like, I'm here, someone asking a question. It's like, why the hell, why did they cut me off like this? What the hell did I do wrong? And then that led you to go within to figure some shit out, right? Yeah, look at that. We have the Five of Swords now with the Three of Cups, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Swords, but the Eight of Swords. Hmm. Someone really feels stuck between a rock and a hard place. You have some really beautiful energy of the Three of Cups, Ace of Cups, and Ace of Swords sandwiched in between the Five of Swords and the Eight of Swords. The Five of Swords talking about the conflict of the past and someone feeling 
blocked, chained, caged. Unable to express some sort of love or feeling like, feeling like they're unable to express some sort of love or truth or clarity. Bring something uh, into like a, a, a union, a reunion, a celebration, three of cups. Someone's like, I know now, I know now, but I feel like I can't. Eight of Swords, you feel prisoned, you feel chained, you feel blocked, you feel caged, like you're bound by the actions of the past, Five of Swords, but you're not. You see, the beauty of all of this is number one, you have the Ace of Swords here, okay? So this is, a, this is a sort of truth, clarity, honesty, and integrity. You literally are holding something. You're holding a sword that can break you free from all of this. The beauty of the Eight of Swords is that you have the ability to cut yourself free. You just have to choose to do so. You have to choose to walk away from all this fuckery, Five of Swords. Because this is a lose-lose situation here. Nobody wins in the Five of Swords energy. You've got to leave this behind. You have to choose to. And I do feel like many of you already have or you're willing to. But you're going to have to make some sort of move here in relation to that. It's, and it's funny because we were talking about that in happy hour last night. But it's like it's, it, you can't. It's not enough to just say to the universe, okay, I'm done with this. You have got to actually follow through with that. So like I, some examples from my life, it's like, okay, well, over the summer, I ran into some situations. I ran into two situations in which one was a recreation of like the way that I met my twin flame and <clears throat> some of the, the elements or the circumstances of that situation were mirrored in another situation that I came across over the summer. And then right after that, I real, right after I saw that connection, maybe like a week or two later, I ran into a situation in which it was a recreation of how me and my ex-husband got together. And when I really recognized what all of those were, what all of those meant, and why those were returning back into my life, I said, okay, spirit, I get it. And I cut those things out. I took action to, well, especially when in terms of the situation that, that mirrored my ex-husband, I literally took action and said, I'm sorry, but this is too, I, I can't do this with you. This is too reminiscent of my situation with my ex-husband and I cannot do this again. You're a wonderful person. I really don't mean to hurt you, but I just can't do this. And you know what? My intuition was right. Because as soon as I did that, he lashed out the same way my ex-husband would have. I mean, literally, it was, it was the same exact energy. But I recognized it, and I put a stop to it. The situation, like, with my twin, it's like, okay, well, you know, I didn't... That was similar. That was mirroring the situation with my twin. I didn't necessarily cut that person off because I was working with him. But I, I recognized the energy, and then I said, oh, okay. And I pushed the energy away. I said, mm, sorry, I can't do this with you energetically right i closed off that door to that energy to that type of circumstance don't get me wrong like me and that guy are cool but like still i recognized it and i put a stop to it you have to take the action you have to follow through with it and the follow through here especially in the energy with like this four of swords in reverse talking about how you don't need to rest or meditate on it any longer well now you just got to take the action to walk away from to, to 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 clear the air to walk away from the bullshit and to cut yourself out of this prison that you feel like you're in you're only in this energy of the eight of swords if you allow yourself to be Right? Okay, um, I wanna pull a little more clarity on just this energy, because this is pretty, 
not gonna lie, this is, it, I mean, it feels, it's good in the sense that we have this Ace of Cups, Ace of Swords, Three of Cups, like this desire to reconnect, this dire desire to reconcile and whatnot, whatever, holding this truth. But there's still a little bit of troubling energy surrounding it. So I wanna get closing guidance in terms of that from Spirit, and then we'll get our Oracle guidance. Now, also with this Page of Swords at the bottom of the deck here, I'm hearing clear, concise, and open communication, like blunt, very to the point, n not um, not beating around the bush, not sugarcoating anything, just being very direct. But I'm also getting an energy of watching each other, keeping your eye on someone. Because you wanna you wanna be with them, you wanna talk to them, you wanna get to know them better, have a loving relationship with them. You just don't necessarily know how to go about it right now. The past can only stop you if you allow it to. I'm gonna take this. Ace of Cups, which is in reverse. We have the six of cups at the bottom of the deck. Okay, let's see what else. The Ten of Cups. The Seven of Swords. The Page of Swords again. <laughs> Four of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. We have the Seven of Swords here, which has fallen on this stuff, which does include the Ten of Cups. I did see that. We have the King of Swords, the Six of Cups, and the World. We have the Page of Swords, and we also have the Ace of Cups, which is here in reverse. And I just feel like this Ace of Cups here is is manifesting. It's not that it's blocked. It's not that it's, re it's a rejection. It's just that it's still in the process of manifesting. It's coming. It's coming, you guys, okay? Um, King of Swords, Six of Cups, and the world. Someone is very aware, very consciously aware of who their soulmate is. It's bringing an end to a troubling time. You have... Oh my God. <laughs> you have the King of Cups with the Ten of Cups. This fell, this fell face down, and then you have the Seven of Swords that fell on top of it, face up. So what you're seeing right now on the surface is not truly what is going on down deep. What's really going on down deep? King of Cups, Ten of Cups. <laughs> Love. Love is what's what's really going on underneath the surface. But then also, with this King of Swords, Six of Cups, and the world energy here, I'm also kind of getting an energy of someone being guarded against some sort of soulmate relationship, but that is actively coming to an end. It's almost as if someone is like looking at this soulmate connection with this Six of Cups, Soulmate, twin flame, divine partnership, whatever. Doesn't matter, it's just a label anyway. But someone is looking at this connection objectively and starting to see it for what it truly is and is starting to put the past away and is watching, wanting to communicate, thinking of ways of wanting to communicate. I'm hearing dreaming of ways to, to communicate. And then there's the Four of Swords again at the bottom of the deck. And with that, I'm hearing patience. Patience is necessary. Patience will get you where you want to go. Someone is 
in fact, hiding what they truly feel. But I'm not saying that, I'm not telling you guys that to like generate any sort of anger or resentment. Love is scary, you guys. And like me personally, I have that perspective of having been married. Now, granted, our marriage only truly lasted officially for two years, but in all, our relationship lasted for nine. We were seven years into our relationship before we actually got married. And really the only thing that pushed us towards it was the fact that New York State had finally legalized it. In terms of um, gay, gay marriage, right? So I have, personally, I have the perspective of having been in a long-term relationship and ultimately an ending now it needed to end. It had run its course, basically. But I do understand the fear of number one, getting your heart broken, but number two, investing in something that may not necessarily work out. And that's kind of what I'm feeling here. It's almost as if someone is, is hiding what they truly feel because maybe they don't want to mess things up. Maybe they don't want to seem like a failure maybe they don't want to come they don't want their fears of being inadequate to be proven to them it's an energy and it's funny because i've kind of been feeling this too it's like i feel something coming i have been for some time but it's different now because at this point i'm like i have this little twinge of fear it's like oh god well wait a second maybe it's better that it doesn't come like i'm actually really good here what happens when it like actually gets there? What happens when I actually get it? Like, how are things going to change then? I mean, what does that mean? I've gotten so comfortable in this space. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I want that. Don't get me wrong. I want it, but I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have it. Maybe I should just like stay here. That's what I'm feeling. King of cups, 10 of cups, but with the seven of swords. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, granted, I don't stay in that energy for too long because I, I do truly want this. But at the same time, there's a little part of me that's kind of afraid. It's not for lack of trying. It's not like this person wants to be deceptive. What I truly feel is like whomever this is, whether this is you or maybe someone else that you're you're connecting to, or this is just you in terms of what you're really passionate about. It's like you really want this, but you re see that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. You really love it. Whatever this is, this could be a, a, a career path. It could be a creative project. This could be a romantic relationship. But what I'm feeling here is, you really love this. You really have respect for this. And you don't want to hurt it. You don't want to tarnish it. You don't want to sully it even. With maybe some bad behavior or poor choices or something like that. But what I want you to recognize is that is definitely a sign of growth and maturity. Because no longer are you looking at the situation from the fact that it's like, oh yeah, psh, I got this, but what not. What. You're looking at it like, holy shit, I could really hurt this person or I could really do some damage here or what if what if I don't do this justice that is you being mature so go ahead and pat you if you're in that energy right now go ahead and pat yourself on the back because you are recognizing the fact that you are a human being and you're not perfect nobody's perfect but if someone can look you in the face and love you for your imperfections, then you really have nothing to worry about. Love you for your imperfections specifically, not your your shiny and 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 polished and sparkly parts, but like your dark parts, your pain, your fears, your shadow. If someone can love that within you, then honey, you got to catch. 
you have got a catch and a half. <laughs> okay, let's get our Oracle Guidance to close out this reading today. I'm going to do the Crystal Mandala. as if this person king of swords six of cups the world and the page of swords it's as if this person is trying to figure out a way to bring the conflict to a close and to offer some sort of love here one last shuffle oh try that again Oracle guidance, please, spirit. Ooh, okay. Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite. Card number 41. Daring rebirth. And this just and this does boil down to a five, y'all. Fives are a number of change. Daring rebirth. This is actually kind of perfect. 41. Okay. We bring you the power of daring rebirth, the empowerment, excuse me, of daring rebirth. The bold spirit in you claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph in a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or from your own mind. There is so much possible for you, a radically different and new you to become. Believe, and so shall it be. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to read more of this, but... This, okay, I want to read this specifically because this is literally what I was just talking about. Your fear might be of success, of your own value, of being alone or being rejected, abandoned, judged, ridiculed, shamed, or ignored. Your fear might be that you'll mess up or regret your decisions. It might be that you won't know who you are if you're not your job, your relationship, role as a parent or healer, or any other limited identity you have tried to project your entire being into. Life on the other side of that fear might seem unfathomable to your mind. You might worry that you will simply cease to exist. Just to be clear, however, no one who has transitioned from fear-based reality into a love-based reality has ever said, or will ever say, I miss my fear-based reality. Although it can be painful, what you are giving up will not be cause for regret. The Oracle of Daring Rebirth comes to you when, then, when there is an opportunity to confront a fear and release it, to let go of a belief system or behavior that is getting in the way of, your life, you, of the life you actually dream of living. It's your decision whether to challenge that fear now, later, or at all. If you are doubting your readiness and capacity, however, this oracle suggests that you are more ready than you think you are, and that your time is now. There is a new you emerging. It might shock your friends and family. People may accuse you of not being you anymore, but you are becoming more you than, you ever, than ever before. Trust the new you emerging in the greater authenticity and strength you are discovering in yourself. You do not have to squash your being to fit in with the expectations of any other. Through daring rebirth, you tap into the courage you need not only to go through the process of transformation, but the spiritual sassiness you need to give yourself permission to love and be the new you that emerges at the other side of it. Treasure that self reborn, for it has been hard won and is a divine treasure. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. God, I love it when the closing oracle message resonates like so perfectly. Like, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, right? 
Okay, guys, with that said, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.